Everybody, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. thank you. So, welcome to this presentation. As you can see in the title, in this session we will go to talk about how to optimize the workflow between designers and developers using uh, templates, design systems, and paragraphs. But first, please, let me introduce the speaker. Here we are, our amazing Lara. She is, she is a user, and she is a designer. She has experience in the user experience and user interface. Also, we have Jose, which is a software engineer, and myself, I'm Monica, as a front-end developer. All of us, we are working for One X Internet. So, as you can see in the screen, there you go, um, QR, where you, if you want, you can scan, and then easily you can follow all the presentation and the slide that we will show here in, in this session. But first, we will start with the agenda. At the first point, we will show the principal or main idea about the problem that we found in some of the projects and the proposed solution that we will explain you. At the second point, we will show you the proposed flow. This means that step by step, we will show you what is the solution and the flow that we usually follow uh, in our projects. And then, at the end, we will show you an example a real example about how this workflow works in, the real, in a real case. So, our idea and the central point of this presentation will be the templates. Why? Because templates make things easier, especially in collaboration terms. But first, we will get some context about what the problem that we found between developers and designers, because sometimes, you know, could be a bit problematic, let's say. It could be because sometimes we have some friction between designers and developers because as a developer, sometimes we found that we find a really, really hard design in order to implement. And as a designer, maybe sometimes they feel um, a bit um, hard because they feel that they, we cannot at the end implement all of the design that they, they provide us. So, this can up in some unsustainable situations, delays, conflict, and uh, failures. But why this is a problem? So we will show you some example in the both side, as a designers and as a developers. So let's start with the, the problem that we found as a designers. Sometimes it happens that as a designer, maybe you don't know how much complex could be to implement something, how hard it could be. So maybe you can do an incredible user experience with an incredible user interface, beautiful, pretty, but this cannot be implemented because this is a one million times harder in order to do it. Like another thing that could be very similar and more easy, of course. And we should not forget that sometimes the deadline are really, really strict in, in the project. So we need to reduce that time. Or maybe sometimes happen that the designer overlook the technical requirements. This means that at the beginning of the project, we define all the tools, the, mm, all the necessary that we will need for the project. And maybe they don't, they don't know if the, some of the design is not technical doable in some specific projects. So because we're maybe missing some technologies or maybe the dependencies of some of them, and of course, we cannot forget about the deadline of the projects. Also, as a designer, sometimes happens that they forgot to define and reuse some components or behavior. This means that at the first moment that you see some designer, maybe you're a bit confused because you see a lot of things inside of the one only file designer, then we will see some different components that we see here, something similar with the other, but with different colors, with different styling, and um, of course, sometimes they focus on a really, really um, design, but they forgot to define maybe, let's say, a basic things, like could be the hovering of the links, the transition, um, and so on. But now, what about the developers? What happened with us? Why we have some problems here? Maybe this is because, as a developer, we directly don't understand the design. We don't get the user experience idea that the designer wants to show us. So, at the end, we get con some confusion, and we don't know we ho how to really implement it, that kind of design. Another thing that frequently happens 
has a de developer is that we need to check and check and recheck again the design because we see that we don't have maybe consistency in between the same exactly component that we are using in the design or because they just they change in, in the middle of the project. Then, and of course, this is really important to have consistency with all that we have in, in some design. And as I mentioned before, sometimes maybe we need to guess some behavior because we are missing in the, in the design, as I mentioned, like overing or transition and, and so on. So if we try to get some conclusion about the problems um, of the possible problem between designers and developers, we will get some main topics to, in order to, to try to solve it. So to sum up, the problem can be reduced to the lack of communication. The communication between your team is really, really important. In order to have, you see at the very first moment that you see some design, you need to be able to raise your hand and say, hey, I didn't get the user experience idea. I don't know how much, how, what do you want to, to do really? So maybe let's have a meet and let's check what do you want to really do. And of course, sometimes happens that in the middle of the project, we have some changes in the design. So we need to check at the very moment to, in order to see this is, could be done in, the, in that moment. So the second point will be the agreement, not only about the teams and the collaboration between developers and designers, also about to clarify how the things will be done, where, how, or even if they are possible. Another important point is definition, not only about um, the technologies, also about the flow, the tools, everything, the process, the behavior, everything that we will need to go successfully in life to some of, the, of our projects. And consistency. We need to have, of course, in the design, consistency, not only the design, also in the developer parts, we have consistency between all the same components that we will use, for example, exactly the same padding inside a bottom, exactly the same colors, and, and so on. So now we are going to talk about the solution that we propose with the matching atomic templates. But what is the matching atomic template? This means that we will have two connected templates. So as you can see in the screenshot we have on the right side, we will have some templates for the design, which will match and say exactly the same as we have in the left side, for the developer side. So this, this, this will be the starting point to any project, but why? Because this could be reusable, iterable, and maintainable for the both side, not only about the developers, also for the designers. And then, of course, this will be the base for any or new project that we will, uh, that we will try to, to use in the future. Now, we will going to extend to some proposed solution about the whole workflow that we will try to use from to any template to, to the product. But how this whole, this workflow we will going to start. So the step one will be to implement these templates that we will need to define. So for that reason, we will define the foundations. On the developer side, we will have some development templates. Also, we will have some the base front-end functionality that we will need for all of the projects that we will work. Of course, we will have also themes with some design tokens that we will use and the encapsulated anatomic component. Now, in the design perspective, we will use the design templates where inside we will have, of course, the design of any front-end functionality that we will need. And of course, the variables with, for the design tokens that we will use in the, in the front end, and again, the encapsulated anatomic component design. Now, we will continue with Lara, which will explain deeper the structure of these templates. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. It's hard with one, only one hand. Yes. Right. So, hi all. So now it's time to see how works 
and help designers here. Yes, you heard well. I said help, because at the end, we want to help you. We need to pass a lot of time with all of you together. We started to think, to think that maybe uh, we need to use the same language uh, than developers. And of course, we need to add in our own flow uh, a new flow, a new flow, traduce uh, our layouts using uh, same structure and content. Um, And the most important thing here is that uh, the, the template um, should accomplish uh, its alignment and synchronization, of course. So let's see how we organize this template to use the same content and same structure. We are going to start with the foundation. The foundations are the principal aspects uh, of, the, of the style of the client of the project. Uh, and represent the total palette of resources uh, we can work with in order to decide or implement our UI. This, this foundation uh, can be typographies, uh, spaces, colors, these type of things. In the design side, uh, we are going to use a new feature that the software that we use incorporate last month, uh, named variables and styles. Uh, where naming uh, should be mainful and we don't have the responsibility to name it. We are going to introduce this naming in all of our templates. Try to avoid the use of, for example, light gray, light, light gray, light gray zero. So we define uh, general variables that we can reuse in all of our projects. So it's part of our template. Developers in their case, We'll use configuration to match those variables and get in sync. The second thing that we have in our template and in design system template too are components. The components uh, are elements that make sense themselves. They are complete and do not need to be accompanied by other uh, elements. Example, for example, like you say, like you see here, badges, uh, buttons, inputs, headlines. We structure the component following uh, the atomic design principle. We divide it in atoms, molecules, and organisms. It's really, really important to always use foundation to define this component. Developers, in their case, will implement encapsulate component using the same foundation. The third thing that we have are sections sections are a set of components that come together to take a function of, uh, at a more global level. These are, for example, accordions, breadcrumb, cards, what else. They are uh, wrapped in order to fit in the future website and implement basic layout structures. Developers will integrate components in this section that then will be used directly in the final website. And finally, we are going to have pages. We are started uh, these pages defining regions. This region can be footer, header, menus, and we are going to use this section to build uh, our page examples. Developers will also use uh, to mock up, uh, will also mock up this section, these pages, sorry, in their design system. And this will be helpful in order to present and test a real website to some implementations, some projects, or, or clients. It's very important to see that using this structure and following this structure in the most of our projects help to let, our, let other colleagues to switch between projects uh, and have insta instant content, context and knowledge about it. So after see how, how is organized this template, uh, we want to explain how we use this template in one new design. May, but we, I want to start saying that maybe you have in your mind that maybe using this template uh, can constrain the, the part of the designer. It's something that we start to think when we uh, start with the flow. We start to think that maybe they want to move us to the dark side, but at the end, uh, thinking we 
have the answer that maybe no. Mom, sure that no. Why not? It's so simple. We are going to use this template to translate our designs in their language. And we add it as part of our flow. So at the end, we, don't, we want to maintain the principal, the principal principle of a product designer that design finish them when users are able to use it. And at the end, all of you are very important part of it, like developers. First, we are going to start uh, with our brainstorming, drafting, defining the product, and, the, and resolving the goals of the project or the client. Then we are going to check with the team, and after it with the client, and after it, uh, we are going to start creating this first draft of the design template. We take our template base, and we duplicate it, and create a move to the project template. We are going to, to create this draft to start defining the, the principal foundation. Then any pages that we are going to create for this project and uh, have to maintain these, uh, have, we'll use section components and foundations. So the most important thing is to take them as reference and update it while we are updating the, while we are designing our page. And the end, and we are going to have a, a, a fully updated template. So uh, in the future, but but for now you can just focus on the things you really need to use for the specific pages you are designing. And of course, I will make the project more more consistent. It will make the project more consistent. So the template lets. Le, let's us, like a designer, uh, focus in the, um, in the hard part of a new project. How this provide this focus? First of all, uh, if we follow, uh, we, we are going to have a basic checklist of the elements that we need in all of our projects. So uh, we have a list of already designed, designed elements and foundation, like a checklist, like I said. So you don't need to think or remember all of them. Um, in this case, we make sure that developers uh, have all the things to create the, the different pages and the different things of the, of the project. And we don't, we don't have interruptions in the middle of the project with a small thing like uh, what is the hover of this main button with this the, the, on the, the hover of this link or what the. The second point is that, uh, based in the central nature of, of design system, uh, we are going to have a continuous improvement. And because we are going to, using this, we are going to have maintaining a product and it's more, more, much, more, much easier. When we base a project on, on our design system template, we follow a big set of features and a clear structure. So we can continuously implement and improve internally um, for our uh, new design. Fixes on improvement in the design system and design file. Um, templates instantly propagate toward the future products when we change foundation or components because they are uh, used everywhere. So for this reason, uh, we, we, we want, um, for this reason, we improve the quality uh, for our products uh, continuously, and we can scale up and grow uh, rapidly uh, in a controlled way. The third point is uh, design consistency. For us, it's not only a big positive impact uh, from the user experience perspective, because additionally, it makes shorter product development so uh, production times reduce and thanks sounds to the reusability and the and extensibility of, of these templates. The fourth uh, point, and not the, the last one, uh, when we design a new feature uh, and they are implemented this new feature, if uh, it's not very specific feature of one of project, we can contribute uh, those to the template if we want and that um, that uh, why we spread the knowledge and, and the templates get more complete. 
So this template is always a live file because always is always um, is we provide always a new feature there. But it's on the on this point, uh, it's good to to give you the information that help up uh, to let other uh, colleagues to switch between projects and, and have uh, instant content and knowledge about it. So we reduce the time uh, for onboarding between projects, uh, so we, we can move uh, more fastly. Into this, this flow, uh, we incorporate the step three is the, the agreement. So uh, between the, the the agreement between between both designers and, and developers, we try to always avoid uh, something like this. So we start to to define some follow some rules to follow. We always incorporate these specific uh, rules in all of our, in all of our design system, where we uh, define different status uh, where when we are working together between designers and developers, they always know when something is ready or when something needs to, to, to review for both. Com communication is really important. And with, when, with the, where design is being done, when we start to design, they always have access to, to our files. So they always um, can add comments, uh, start trees to, in order to clarify or to point uh, out technical ideas uh, over the design. So we always make sure that, that the thing that we are creating at the end are going to be implemented. The second point is uh, for these agreements are uh, have always validation meetings. Are not, don't have to be longer meeting, only, only a small meeting that uh, between designers and developers uh, in order to allow, um, align points of view and get to, to agreements. For us, it's more easy to continue and make sure that always they can implement the thing that we are creating, like I said. The most important thing is have agreement uh, on, foundation, on the foundations. The main thing we need to agree on are the foundation that will be used everywhere in both the design and in the implementation. So we, may, we have to make sure that both of them are connecting and we are agreeing. And the last one uh, is always iterated uh, when it's needed. Developer uh, can give us feedback uh, when we, they are developing a new functionality, a new feature, and we, like a designer, uh, can maybe uh, change something if for them is more easy to implement or we can implement this design in a most easy way and, and not be complicated their life or when we consider it or when the client request. At the same time, uh, this, this four point, this iteration provided a constant design uh, quality assurance process. So we don't have surprise at the, uh, in the last moment. So it's important to know that uh, we never lose uh, we never lose our communication in the process. We need to be transparent and, and of course, uh, keep templates in sync. So finally, uh, following this step, um, we get to be a happy team working in a comfortable atmosphere. And we boast our performance to together, of course improve the quality of our project, and um, we are aligned our time because at the end, we are going to speak the same language. Now, Jose is going to continue with the third part of this. Okay, so after the agreement phase, now we get to think about what developers are actually going to do now. So uh, we have a new design, we have agreed a foundation, so we can actually start developing, right? We are going to get our uh, design system that is, of course, in synchronization with our design template and with the new design. So we need to clone up and set up everything in order to actually get the starting point that we are going to, to get. Then we are going to start adapting it. 
So we are going to get the new design. We're going to start inspecting, checking the new changes, the new variables, everything that has been updated from designer side. And we are going to uh, update our design uh, system uh, accordingly. So we are going to start as we are following atomic design principles. We're going to start with the foundations. Once again, you can see the variables. You can just check what uh, values has been changed because the naming is always the same. And you can just update the, to the new value and get instantly changes in the whole design system because everything in your design system is based on those foundations. Then you are going to update the components because maybe uh, a component when, when foundations has been changed has changed in the same direction. But of course, uh, designers can change how actually uh, the, these components are going to work or are going to uh, look in the end in different projects. So you probably need to do some tweaking and change little things for each component or for a few uh, of them. And finally, we will implement any new features that the project requires. Uh, because, for example, if you are just uh, implementing something that is in a different field, you need something specific for that field, like e-commerce or something like that. So to sum up, we had four steps. We started with the templates. We needed to define them in, or actually, in order to actually have these uh, starting points and to have them in sync. Then we uh, had a new design. The designer started drafting, had the freedom to actually do whatever they wanted, but then they took the, this template and started uh, yeah, changing and updating the foundations. So then uh, developers could actually update their design system too and keep synchro synchronous uh, work. Of course, we have a validation meeting where we just agree on those foundations. And finally, we get to our design system implementation and update everything to get uh, everything uh, for the new project that we are working on. But where is Drupal? You might be wondering that because we are in a Drupal camp. So where is Drupal in all these uh, equations? So we actually need to implement uh, to, to get this uh, design system into a real website. And in order to do that, we will use uh, Drupal. So how is it that design system going to be consumed? Easy. We are going to have a Drupal theme template, also a template, uh, that is uh, automatically using all these web comp all these components or all these web components as we are going to, to explain later why we use them uh, in order to uh, yeah, implement the design on the website so to get the design into the real website and this theme is of course going to have sections regions whatever and all of them are going to be already using the, the design system but uh, we want to be specific in the paragraphs that are going to be those sections because they are going to let editors actually uh, add these components that we have in the design system wherever they want in their, in their pages. So they will be consuming the web components or components, and they are going to be a style following exactly the same uh, style config or a style framework that we have uh, for our design system. So now we're going to get to finalize our presentation with a small example. So we are going to talk first about the design and development tools that we choose. I already said something, but let's go through them. So we have, of course, Figma on the design side. You've already seen in the screenshots. And we choose it because it's letting us uh, use things like variables, styles, that are letting us define these uh, design tokens, these, um, yeah, these values that are, in the end, going to be matching the implementation in the, in the, in the developer side. And of course, it's providing us and boosting our communication thanks to threads, uh, comments, and all these uh, helpful uh, utilities that Figma provides. And on the development part, we will use lit for the web components. As I mentioned, we are implementing the components encapsulated thanks to, to this concept of web components that are implemented with TypeScript to be type safe. Type safe and in style with Tailwind CSS, that it's uh, a very good match with Figma in order to actually get those design tokens in synchronization, because it lets you just define a whole configuration file where you just get all your variables in on all the values that we're going to use, and then keep exactly the same uh, class uh, utility classes to, to actually implement your design, your, your styles in, in any uh, markup. And of course, Drupal and Twig, as I just mentioned, for the integration to actually get all these things that we are talking about into a real website. OK, so our example is going to be to relaunch our company website. We are still working on it, and it's uh, something that is in process. So we want to, to see how, how this flow has been used in, in this process that we, we are currently working on. 
So first of all, defining the, the templates. I'm not going to talk too much here because it's already explained in all the, the parts that we have before. So you have, as you have been seeing, we use Figma. We have all the foundations. We have those bullet points that Lara explained about uh, the status of every part, the foundations, the components. And of course, all, all of this will be the base for, for our design. And we have Quartz is the name of our design system that you can see here thanks to a storybook that is letting us structure uh, everything the same way as we do on Figma. So you have the same exactly uh, foundations, the same exactly components, the sidebar structure is exactly the same, which makes things much easier. And of course, we will take it as the base for, for this new project. So some important, important features that I already mentioned, the variables, you can see there how values are just added to different namings, and then developers can just check that list and take all the values to their uh, Tailwind config, and the developer mode, where when you are actually inspecting a design, you can just go specifically to, for example, this button and check exactly which variable is being used for the padding, which variable is used for, for whatever else. And on the design system side, we have a change log where we can just provide what was before you actually started the project, so you can see what was from the template and what is new. You can just copy the markup of your web components and paste it wherever, and it will work. And you can just change using these fields uh, how uh, every specific case of a component looks like, so you can always see every possible uh, variant of your components. Then we start our new design. The designers will, of course, again, clone the design template after some drafting and some ideas. And they are going to get started with the pages and the regions. They don't need to start following the whole sidebar to actually change everything, every foundation, every component. They can just start designing. But at the same time, they will be updating all these foundations. So they, for example, take the template. They just go to the pages and, for example, design this uh, nice page. And at the same time, they are designing these kind of pages. They are going back to every component or every foundation that it's involved and they are changing them in, a, in order to actually keep and at the end get a library that is uh, specifically ready to use for, for development so they can just get in sync easily. Then we have the agreement phase. It's an example, but of course it's just design review, checking, inspecting, saying, okay, this is doable, this is not, then let's change a little bit here, let's change a little bit there. And we validate it so designers and developers are on agreement in terms of foundations and, and all these templates. Then we start inspecting and copying. We can just export some assets. We can just go to, uh, to the colors, copy some variable uh, values, uh, maybe some typography that it's new now. Um, yeah, following all the foundations, checking some values for spacings also. You can just copy all these values and then, of course, get to the code. So you go to your uh, assets. Again, you can change your assets. You can change your Tailwind config. For example, here are the colors. Paste the values that you just copied exactly on the same names that you already know. And uh, for example, yeah, some spacing value that you also copied. And then this will be applied to the components. But of course, as I mentioned, maybe you need to change something on, on the component. Um, yeah, now. You can maybe need to change something specifically on, on the component side, uh, something that is changed for that uh, specific new design, and maybe also some Tailwind plugins or whatever related to your actual framework, in our case, Tailwind. So then again, the integration, where is Drupal? We have a theme. You can see there that it's Granite. It's called Granite, and it's cloning inside of it the design system that is Quartz uh, in exactly this, this folder called there. And then, of course, it's building it, and it's going to the to the build folder, to this folder. And you can see there that the libraries are defined in order to actually introduce each component as a library. So then your theme can just consume the components on demand. And you can maybe also just specify exactly which ones you want to have always available, like on this uh, one on the, on the left, right, right side. You can see all these components specifically are uh, required all the time. But then, of course, you can maybe just want to, to attach a component, since they are now libraries, to a specific point, to a specific paragraph, or a specific region. So you can just do it doing attach library, and you attach your library specifically where you need it. And of course, these uh, paragraphs and these template sections can be directly just selected by the editor, so they can just get our design and our components directly into their websites, just clicking uh, in a few places. So the result, it's a customized design system where you can just see all the new values there, all the new colors. 
You can just go by checking some icons that are new with a, with a brand icon, and everything is just updated. So as you are using it and, and you are just synchronizing it with your theme, everything will get to a real website. For example, this is a page of the website using the accordion component, and you can see there that it's just looking exactly as, the, as it was defined on the design system. So as conclusion, we just want to point out these three key factors that are actually making this flow helpful and, and really usable. That it's a stability, it's something that it's really needed when developers and designers are collaborating because uh, you need to be on the same line. You need to be consistent. When you design something, you, need, you want it to be exactly the same on the development side and exactly the same on the real website. And in order to do that, we need uh, com good communication that is, of course, always uh, going to help us to be aligned and to be uh, up to date with all the changes and all the updates that designers do and that developers need to, to implement. Finally, the structure, as we have mentioned, the templates were our key idea and uh, updating them needs to be easy and it's going to help us to make things maintainable, reusable and extensible and in the end that uh, ends up into uh, productivity and boosts uh, our uh, yeah, processes. So yeah, that was all. Thanks to our platinum sponsors, thanks to the gold, silver, and bronze sponsors, and thanks to you. So do you have any questions? <laughs> questions? Ah, wonder. Okay, thank you for your talk. Uh, I was just curious, uh, because uh, if, if I understood it well, uh, the implementation in Rupal of the, of the components is done by web components, so you are effectively bypassing the Twig uh, um, layer of Drupal and using web components di directly. So why was this decision? Can you please explain? So it's not exactly bypassing, it's just that you have a web component library that is uh, aside from your Drupal, and then your Drupal is actually consuming those web components. So as I saw, you can just specify which ones are required everywhere, but you still can have your tweak uh, templates to do whatever, to do regions, to do blocks, to do whatever you need. But of course, the, the concept of having a design system is that you actually use those web components in those tweak templates but you can attach them specifically where you need it or you can just require them to be always available for all your uh, templates. But it's not uh, skipping that part, it's just that you have it, but of course if you are actually following this, this flow, you are expected to actually use the, the library that you are uh, defining. Yeah, just let me then change my, my question. What are the benefits of web components? Why are you using them or what uh, can you get with web components that you can't get with Drupal? What? It, this is actually maybe the question I want to, to I yeah, wanted okay. to have. So in the end, the, the point is that it's really easy to make web components uh, match exactly structures and uh, designs that are based on small and encapsulated features and uh, styles and yeah looks and feels that you want to have exactly the same and totally uh, encapsulated. In that sense, if you actually want to have a component and then you are having a CSS file that it's on your on a folder on your Drupal and then someone else comes implementing something and overrides some uh, variables or some uh, style classes, everything is going to look messed up. But if you have a web component, it's totally encapsulated and you can trust that your design system is defining exactly how any of those web components is going to look all the time. It's never going to be uh, touched by anyone. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. Then, yeah. Thank you very much.